game is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. They're in Corvallis, 85 degrees, projected high today of 99. Yeah, late summer and warm here in the Willamette Valley. We're at Lorenz Field in Corvallis, and the starters for UNLV sent up by head coach Rich Ryerson. Timo Malish at midfield, Oscar Velazquez, Kevin Partita. Those three excellent at feeding guys like Mazowski. Yeah, and that's going to be extremely important in this 4-3-3 formation. It's about getting the ball up front and letting the top three really work at it and find a way to create multiple chances. And for Oregon State under head coach Steve Simmons in his ninth year, the Alaskan. And that's the lineup he sends out. Three forwards, Don Chilau, Timmy Mueller, and Jordan Jones isn't in the lineup, but those three are all going to get significant minutes. Yeah, they have. They are a great combination. You know, they're interchangeable, but you'll expect Mueller to be in there most of the time. But Chalau, this year playing up top, moving from that midfield position, we'll see how effective he is today. Looking to get his speed involved even more. That's Chilau in the foreground. Oregon State lost on Friday at home to Fairfield, two to one. Fairfield had two count of two shots on goal the entire match both in the last 10 minutes and it stunned Oregon State and I think that's that's one of the big concerns for coach Steve Simmons is making sure that his team concentrates for the full amount of time until that final whistle is blown because he's expecting that from a pretty experienced side Shota Takata on the ball he had played left back on Friday when UNLV went to the University of Portland and stunned the Pilots. A 2-1 to one win. In fact, a 3-2 win. And the final goal came with one second left in the second overtime by Daniel Moran. Marquise Pitt dispossessed by Jaime Morales. And a foul going to go Oregon State's way. Oregon State looking forward to playing UNLV because the Rebels are more like a Pac-12 team, a team that's not going to sit back in a bunker like Fairfield did. UNLV is going to get after it. Yeah, I think this is a, a much different game you know, for Oregon State when they're looking at it. it, it it's more like a Pac-12 team. It'll be more of an open game. They didn't have to try to break down a defense that was just going to sit or is going to sit back as they had to do against Fairfield. Jalen Markey falls down. Opportunity early for Danny Mazowski. Marquise Pitt. Here's Takata from Honolulu. Serving it in. And the flag is up. Offside. You're looking at Shota Takata. Again played left back on Friday. Starting it forward today. The keeper for the Oregon State Beavers is Ryan Vincent. Stepped in last year in the wake of Nolan Worth's injury. The players didn't feel much of a change. It can happen with a keeper. If uh, if he's not doing the job, they can lose confidence quickly, and Vincent was. Yeah, and it's extremely important that you have someone in the nets that you feel confident with. It gives you that little extra sense of ability that you're going to have a strong defense back there. Here's Don Chilau from West Africa by way of Chandler, Arizona. Now Joe Hafferty on the ball, the lone freshman in the starting lineup for either team. Lok Strenov, the holding midfielder. Sam Tweet nodded right now. Looking to angle it up to Chilau. It was a good tackle there. Asani Dotson, number seven in white for Oregon State, didn't play on Friday. Bit of a foot issue. Nice to have him back out there today. A good leader. Allen getting it back to the keeper for UNLV, Enrique Adama. Jaime Morales. Morales the Spaniard. Mueller's first touch. Loke Strenov the Dane. Joe Hafferty. Hafferty's got some good quicks. Handball. It'll go to UNLV. Yeah, it's pretty nice for Oregon State to have that ability to get that ball out wide to a true freshman in Hafferty and having a player that plays that left back position, likes to get forward, and is willing to take 
the opposing players on, trying to dribble by them, connecting with passes. That's extremely important. Is then it, it it allows a team to control that whole side, and then it opens up the game a little bit more for your players players centrally. And for a player so young to be able to do that. Well, I think Coach Steve Simmons is going to be happy with that. Hopefully he can keep him around for a few more years. Hafferty, one of three players in the starting lineup for Oregon State. Uh-oh, look out. Here's Mazowski. And Vincent's on top of it. Three players for Oregon State from the Seattle area, and Hafferty, one of those out of the Seattle Sounders Academy. You know, it, make, it makes sense, and you see Hafferty's the one that's tracking back here. He gets just enough of a touch to really stop that decent chance by Mazowski. And that's one thing that the back line of Oregon State is going to have to do. They're going to have to pay attention to wherever Mazowski is. He's not a, a striker that is going to sit centrally all the time. He'll drift to the left. He'll drift to the right. He'll come underneath playing in between the lines. So it's going to be extremely important to pay close attention to where he, where he is. How do you defend that? Well, it's communication. It's communication in the back line of... As, as he drifts away from one defender, that defender's got to let them know, he's, hey, he's coming into your space. Be aware of where he is. And communication from the goalkeeper. Vincent is going to have to be constantly talking to his back four. Jalen Markey. See what he does with it. Inside the 18, headed. Jaime Morales on it. And Enrique Adama, the keeper. Asani Dotson. UNLV playing a little direct there. They're a team that typically likes to play good technical soccer, maintain possession, but they do take some risks. And their head coach, Rich Ryerson, says it's for good reason. UNLV soccer takes risks, and there he is. UNLV is his alma mater played there four years in the 1980s. More games and more starts than anybody in the program history. And he was hired seven years ago. And he knew that to gain support, they had to play exciting soccer. They had to score goals. And he says they do that, but by pushing forward, it can leave them susceptible. Well, that's, that's the big issue, right? Is you're gonna adjust the way you play to make sure that the program is staying around. He's playing in this 4-3-3 formation. Less players on the defense bore into the attack to give that exciting soccer, but then it's all about transition. Once you lose the ball in the offense, offensive end, can you support the defenders so you don't give up too many goals? And it's been a success for UNLV since Ryerson took over. A couple of WAC championships, a couple of NCAA tournament appearances. They beat a Pac-12 team, San Diego State, in the opening round of the NCAA tournament last year. Beat him on PK 6-5. And UNLV under Ryerson has raised $3.5 million. And they're looking for $20 million more over the next five years to get a new stadium there in Vegas. I'm in Morales. Dispossesses UNLV. Looking to go ahead to Don Chilau, but too far. Tyler Allen got a foot on it. Don Chilau from West Africa, went to high school in Chandler, Arizona. Had played left wing last year, playing a lot of forward this year. They're looking for the type of combination they had three years ago when Kyrie Shelton was on the pitch with either Jordan Jones or Timmy Mueller, depending whoever was out there with him. At the time, Jones and Mueller were freshmen. Timmy Mueller, Pac-12 freshman of the year three years ago. And now the two are seniors. Don Chilau is a junior. So veterans up top for Oregon State. OSU picked to finish fifth in the Pac-12 preseason media poll. Of course, a couple of years ago, three years ago, five Pac-12 teams made the NCAA tournament. It is such a competitive conference. Stanford, back-to-back -back College Cup champions. You can finish fifth. You can finish with a sub-500 conference record and still make the NCAA tournament. Now, that's pretty amazing. It just tells you the standard of the Pac-12 
and the respect that it's gained, you know, around the country, that it's one of the top conferences. Hafferty, long throw, Chilau, could maintain possession. Dakota got it out to midfield. Hafferty, Asani Dotson. Haven't heard much from Timmy Mueller yet. That's just his second touch. Jordan Jones, pardon me. Hafferty taking a shot. Hey, good transition, boy. Good shot. Timmy Mueller in the initial starting lineup we were given. Jordan Jones got the start. Mueller will come in and bring fresh legs at some point here in the first half. Enrique Anima, much like Ryan Vincent taking over in the wake of the Nolan Worth injury last year, Enrique Anima earned the starting job in the ninth game of last year. Made the all whack tournament team. Jalen Markey hitting the pitch. Well, this will be interesting to see as this is, you know, early on in the season for both sides, how they do when we're talking about the factor of the weather. It's, it's, it's extremely warm out there. We're going to see, it. can these teams keep up the pressure? We're seeing both teams kind of high press. We're trying to see both teams go over the top. So we're gonna, as the game goes on, how, how many substitutions are going to come into play? How are the legs going to be able to hold up? Because this isn't in the middle of the season where they've kind of established their game fitness. This is extremely early on, so I expect there'll be quite a few changes in this match. And you would think Oregon State would be the deeper team with a guy like Timmy Mueller coming off the bench. Projected high today in Corvallis at 99 degrees. Loke Strenov, Jaime Morales. Sam Tweeden switches the angle of attack. Left channel, Joe Hafferty. Good idea by Hassani Dotson. Let it pass. Went on a sprint. And he earns what will just about amount to a corner kick for his team. Now, I've been pretty impressed with Hafferty coming up the side. He's done an excellent job. He, he, as far as you can see, he's confident on the ball. He opens up just enough to get the pass in as he's trying to find Dotson, and it's always where it needs to be. He hasn't lost the ball yet from that left-back position. Matthias Bender, the Austrian, will take the restart here. In swinger. Header by Jalen Markey up and over the crossbar. As this ball gets put in, this is a long looping ball to the back post. I'm a little bit surprised from where that position is and how the ball came in. The keeper doesn't come out for it, but Markey's got to do better than that. And he, he knows he had an excellent chance there because that is an, a free header at the top of the six. Markey, redshirt senior, looking for his first career goal. Had a big defensive play three years ago in Oregon State's first ever NCAA tournament win. Cleared a ball off the line late in the first half against the University of Denver. 13th minute here. No goals. And in case you like to keep track of these things, no bookings as of yet. Dotson playing forward, looking for Chilau. I'm in Morales, Asani Dotson now. Well, that's a player that Oregon State needs to get on the ball a bit more is Jaime Morales, and, and Morales has to look for that ball, even demand that ball into his feet, because he's the player that can really dictate the way this game goes as far as when he's on the ball and his passes. He scored the game winner at UNLV last September, Jaime Morales. Oregon State won 2 nil in that one. Note, though, that Danny Mazowski of UNLV didn't play in that game, had a bad hamstring. Here's Morales. No foul, no foul. Right behind you, Shota. Get there, Shota, get there, Shota. Straight off to Hafferty. 
Hafferty looking to serve it in. Chilau is right there. Header by James Dry to get it away. He had the height advantage on Chilau. Jalen Markey dumped to the turf by Timo Malish. Second time Jalen has hit the pitch. Now Malish comes in and he's not even trying for the ball. He just goes straight into Markey. So an easy call for the referee. Easy call, but not a card? It's borderline. It's borderline. I, I, I could tell you right now that it's logged in the mind of the referee. That play, if there's another foul that comes through from Malish, I'd expect a card to come out. Uh, Timo Malish is on report. Here's Dry. In fact, that's Malish. Timo Malish. Look, Strenov, able to take it away from him. Off of Takata. Benny Beaver is here. This he's probably hot feeling, day in Corvallis. Yeah, I was about to say, he's feeling pretty good in that heat, huh? <laughs> I hope he's got some AC in there. <laughs> Rich Burke along with Kobe Jones. A great way to pass in to Jones up top. Bender looking wide right. Eric Diaz, they like to get their outside backs forward and part of the offense at Oregon State. Back to Bender. International flair on this Oregon State lineup. Bender the Austrian. Bender and Strenov the Dane. Strenov and Mazowski. Well, Mazowski turns here and Strenov just comes from behind, just uses his body and now I can understand why Strenov might, might be bad. This is a contact sport. It's going to be body body. You see Strenov actually hooking around the, uh, pardon me, you see Mazowski actually hooking around the waist of Strenov. Yeah, at first I didn't think that Strenov had a case, but then at second glance he did. Dangerous ball here. Demo Malish, that's a nice play by Strenov to get it away from Malish. And now Jordan Jones. A little too strong on that touch from Jones. By the way, you and I had a chance to kick the ball around a little bit before the game. I appreciate the tips. Yeah, no problems. No problems. I, I, I always try to help anyone out that needs that help. And I need that help. You need it. Yeah, you need a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I love what you said about the weight of the pass. So important. Adama, the keeper. Yeah, you'll see it quite a bit amongst young players and, and not understanding the weight of the pass and, and getting it the giving the ball the right pace so the player that you're trying to connect with can get to the ball that can play it first time if necessary if the if the ball needs to go in hard and quick to beat to go beyond a defender those are all things that you have to know and learn so when you're coaching did you have your team play a lot of small-sided games to develop those skills? Yeah, that's always important, the small-sided the small -sided games, uh, games that start off small-sided, that ex it gradually expand and then contract so they can figure out how to control and, and change their game to the different conditions that you put upon them. Asani Dotson. Not sure what he wanted to do there. Eric Diaz, nice job to get it back for Oregon State. Now Dotson again. Diaz has Bender on his right. He fell down. Timo Malish, the German, excellent playmaker here. He goes for it. Diving save by Ryan Vincent. Call him a playmaker. Malish just had to go. Yeah, well done by Vincent to be aware on this as Malish just realizes nobody's coming 
stepping up to him, so he's just going to step up and have a crack. And that ball is moving a little bit. It's knuckling. So smart move by Vincent. Just get the two palms up there and just parry it wide. Malish going to take the corner first for either team. Comes here in the 19th minute. It'll be an outswinger. Better effort by Jordan Chavez. Tyler Allen on the ball. Sophomore out of Honolulu. A couple of natives of Honolulu on the right side of the pitch for UNLV. Allen along with Shota Takata. There's James Ng, the 13 for UNLV. Sophomore out of Las Vegas. Five Nevadans and four players from the Las Vegas area on the UNLV roster. On the starting lineup, I should say. And they also have a German and a Canadian. Steve Simmons, ninth year head coach for Oregon State, unheralded program when he got here. But he developed the top pick in the 2010 MLS draft, and the number two pick in the 2015 draft. Danny Mwanga and Kyrie Shelton, respectively. Shelton's been on the shelf, missed about four months with New York City FC with a hamstring injury. But you look at a program like Oregon State developing those types of players. If you're a, a young player, nice place to go. Yeah, of course. I mean, you're looking at just anywhere in the Pac-12 now is, is a nice place to go as the respect level rises. And the Pac-12 is becoming more of a, a producer of talent for the top level. No foul called. This is Mazowski. Past Markey, Mazowski trying to create his own opportunity, pushes Markey down, no foul called, Vincent has it. Now there's got to be a little bit of frustration from Marquise Pitt as he actually makes the perfect run for Mazowski to give the pass. Mazowski elects to go on his own and ends up getting tangled up. The defensive Oregon State does an excellent job of collapsing, just making it too difficult for him to get a shot off. Lazowski has 33 career goals. He also has 18 assists, so a lot of times he will look for that guy. He assisted on Spencer Jackson's goal, the second goal. There's Mazowski, we're in the captain's armband. Assisted on Jackson's goal at UP that tied the match at two. And then Daniel Moran on what amounts to a Hail Mary. There had been a caution, 10 seconds left. Enrique Automa, the keeper, sent one 75 yards down the field. It took a hop inside the 18, and Daniel Moran dinked it up and over the pilot's keeper's head and then headed it in for the winner with one second to go three days ago. Talk about an exciting finish. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, there were thousands of fans there at the University of Portland. Rich Ryerson, the UNLV head coach, said it was the best atmosphere he's ever been a part of in college soccer. Yeah. 
Funny thing is, the online video went out on Friday, the last two minutes, and the stat tracker incorrectly said Portland scored. So at watch parties in Las Vegas and in Ryerson's hometown of Baltimore, everybody went to bed thinking that UNLV had lost. Asani Dotson, Shota Takata was there, and it's a foul. Well, this is a foul at a great position for the Beavers. They can actually have everyone come up with the possibility of a cross or a follow-up off of what has to be a shot from here. You're thinking that it's going to be direct going to goal. The question is going to be who steps up and takes this one. You have a couple that are over the ball. You have Morales and Bender. Matias Bender, the Austrian. Jaime Morales, the Spaniard. Ottawa organizing things. It's Bender who takes it. Big opportunity lost for Oregon State. An opportunity lost, but this is a great effort by Bender as he steps up, just strikes us, and this is how you want to do it. You want to drive that ball, and it just goes off of the bar. Just wide. Just, he has the keeper beaten. If it's just a fraction, maybe half a half a step to the right, that one goes in. But in, instead, it pulls away. Well, we're in the 25th minute, and on this scorching day here in Corvallis, where the high is expected to be 99 degrees, they take a water break. Coming up on the Pac-12 halftime report, Kate Rooney will be in studio. And She'll take a look at the weekend soccer highlights. And football is back. Oregon State with the loss at Colorado State. And uh, by the way, coming up on Thursday on Pac-12 Network, Utah taking on North Dakota. North Dakota made the FCS playoffs a year ago. Sophomore Tyler Huntley won the starting quarterback job over the veteran Troy Williams. That game coming up Thursday from Rice Eccles Stadium here on Pac-12 Network. The United Soccer Coaches poll shows that the defending champion Stanford won the last two college cups. And their tops in the preseason poll, they return a lot of players. Washington 11th, UCLA 21st. Well, it's good to see, you know, within the Pac-12, we're all the three... You know, hovering in that top 20 area, UCLA just on the edge of it. But this is always, it's always interesting. It's preseason. We'll see how it goes. You know, after the first few matches, I expect some of these teams to start creeping up. And I chatted with Steve Simmons, the head coach of Oregon State, a couple of days ago. There he is. And I said, of course, you'd like it to be you. But at the same time, you got to like Stanford winning back-to-back -back NCAA titles. He said, yes. It's like when USC was winning national titles in football. It brought up the respectability of the entire conference and that's happened now with Pac-12 soccer. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's important as long as the Pac-12, like you always want it to be you, right? <laughs> but if, if not, if you can keep it within your conference, that is just, it, it not only does it gain respect, it draws. When you're starting to look and you're starting to recruit, top players are starting to say, you know what, well maybe I want to go to the Pac-12 because I'll be playing against the best. I'll be playing against those top talents so my game can rise and increase and get better. Rich Burke along with Hall of Famer Kobe Jones, former UCLA Bruin, and prior to these two college cups for Stanford, UCLA was the only Pac-12 team to win in NCAA title. They won four of them, 85, 90, 97, and 02. 87 degrees right now, expected high just under 100 as we head into the late afternoon. And of course, you won a college cup in 1990. What was that experience like? It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never forget, you know, there's, you know what? There's something about winning. It just feels good. <laughs> you know, no, it, was, it was a great experience, you know, because you're working all year. You're working. You're hoping that during your college career, you can get something, you know, that you can you can win a title. And if it does come to fruition, something special. So that's why when you look at a team like Stanford, that has won it back to back, and that's given great opportunities and, and great memories for quite a few of those players at Stanford. That's something special that they will always remember for the rest of their lives. After the water break, 
25th minute. Oregon State had one chance recently on the restart just outside the penalty box. Matias Bender. Bender against Oscar Velazquez. That's Matias Bender, transfer this year out of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Bender, 35 games with the Panthers over three years, couple of goals and four assists. Stranov back to Tweeden. Tweeden playing direct, looking for Jordan Jones. This is Kevin Partita. Rich Ryerson calls him the engine of their team. Missed all of last year with an ACL injury. Well, it's interesting. You, you talk about water breaks and how it can affect things, but all of a sudden, after the water break, you see a player like Partita, you know, starting to be a little bit more involved in the game. Now, is that due to the water or is it because of that opportunity for the coaches to have that coaching moment, telling players, hey, you gotta be a little bit more active. You gotta get on the ball a little bit more. Whatever the case, we've seen a direct effect on UNLV. You saw Marco Gonzalez is on the ball right now into the six. Partita, laid out by Diaz. Don Chilau hadn't been able to use his speed yet in this match. That was Diaz against Partida. There's Kevin Partida, 51 games entering this year. Six career goals, five assists, very much a leader. And because he redshirted last year, he gets to play with his brother, Jesus, this year, who is a true freshman. So there was a silver lining to him missing last year with a torn ACL. Don Chilau, give it some space. Morales turns on it. Morales with an opportunity, and he gets dumped. No foul. And Morales is extremely upset, but even over this last 20 seconds or so, some good movement and some chaos in front of the net of UNLV. And you see Morales just dancing through a couple defenders, does a little bit of the touch, the ball's bouncing all around. And, and look, you can scream all you like, and I know the Oregon State team would love to have the call there, but when it's that congested, it's so rare for the referee to give anything up. Here's Jordan Jones, Morales, Chilau. Jordan Jones, senior for Oregon State, all Pac-12 second team each of the last two years. He and Timmy Mueller each have 23 career goals. No sign of Timmy Mueller in this game yet. It has been Jones and Chilau through the first half hour. Right now we've seen before in this position, 
UNLV to have James Dry step up with the long throw. Markey got his head on it. Timmy Mueller warming up as if to prepare to come into this match. Asani Dotson. We're 30 minutes in, Kobe. Field not really tipped one way or the other, is it? And, you know, I still th I still believe it's both sides kind of testing each other out, trying to figure it out. The game, I think due to the heat, the weather, getting a little bit stretched where we're seeing a lot of open space through the midfield. And if one team or the other can take advantage of that, they'll be able to dictate the run of play. Jesus Partida. Kevin's brother coming in, replacing Oscar Velazquez. Timmy Mueller in, Jordan Jones out. So with everybody else, or most of the other players, with 30 minutes of action, in the heat under their belt, and Mueller having fresh legs, can Oregon State capitalize? Memo Diaz into the match for UNLV. Jesus Partida getting his first collegiate action. Didn't play on Friday at the University of Portland. He's number seven in red. So two brothers on the pitch, Jesus and Kevin Partida. Rich Ryerson, the head coach of UNLV. One of four brothers to play for the Rebels. Brother Rob, the school's all-time leader in goals. And Rich himself, the all-time leader in games and starts. Here's Don Chilau. Throw and going Oregon State's way. That's Rich Ryerson. His team upset San Diego State out of the Pac-12 in the first round of the NCAA tournament last year. 1-1 draw, then they won 6-5 on PKs. Jalen Markey. Spencer Jackson got a foot on it. Markey got it back. Now Hafferty. Not a good lead by Hafferty there, but you like what you've seen from him so far. Yeah, for, for a true freshman coming in, I, I liked his first 10 minutes of the game. I think now maybe trying to do a little bit too much, trying to squeeze it in in such a tight space where he could probably pull that back and just keep possession. I think that's important as we're seeing uh, so, some of the substitutions start to occur, I think, due to the heat. Joel Walker into the match for Oregon State. Daniel Moran with a slide tackle. Well, for Moran just coming in, he comes in with a uh, with a nice tackle on Hafferty. Giving a little bit of energy for that UNLV side. Jordan Chavez with the throw in. Daniel Moran had the game winner with one second left in the second overtime. Yeah, 109.59 that goal scored to stun the Portland Pilots in their crowd on Friday night. A 3-2 double OT win for UNLV. Strenov, right side, Eric Diaz. Told you, OSU likes to get their outside backs forward and part of the offense. Chilau tried to go back to Diaz in a two-man game. Instead, Walker was on it momentarily. Now Strenov. Thank <laughs> you. 
Starting to get the feel that the game's getting a little bit choppy. Both teams just kind of clearing the ball in the area. No one's taking control of the match, really grabbing grabbing hold of this game, getting the ball, settling it down, connecting a few passes. Each team with one scoring opportunity. Oregon State on a set play just outside the 18. UNLV on a shot by Timo Malish and a diving save. From Brian Vincent, ball about 30 yards out. Here's Asani Dotson. Daniel Moran defending along with Jordan Chavez. And Jeff Arthur Holtz issuing his first booking. Yeah, this is a good call because as this ball goes right between the legs of Jordan Chavez, he realizes that he's beaten. All he can do is just grab Dotson around the waist and just pull him, pull him to the ground. So a, a deserved yellow card. First booking of the match. Mitch Hammer, a true freshman out of Cave Creek, Arizona, is going to take it here. That's Mitch Hammer from Cave Creek, Arizona, but went to Shattuck St. Mary's, a private boarding school in Fairbo, Minnesota. Opportunity here for Mazowski against Sam Tweeten. Well, that was a name we haven't really said in a while as Mazowski, he's kind of disappeared within the match, hasn't gotten the ball to his feet, hasn't been able to really open up and create space for him to have his teammates find him. That's one of the few times he does a good job of holding the ball up and connecting the next pass. Just after that, they need to have something a little bit better. Not really any shots to say of for UNLV. Chilau outside of his foot, Timmy Mueller. Jalau in the box with the keeper, Adama. On the other side, what's Oregon State got to do to get Timmy Mueller involved? I think for Oregon State, you know, looking at this, it's, it, it's, a, it's about the transition game for them. As you can see, it almost feels like there's a defensive half and then an offensive half. And if situations like this with Mueller's running around the outside is good. Here's Mueller. Mueller with a chance. Slide tackle inside the area. You know, now the issue is, is Mueller's creating and he's doing it on his own. That's the issue as he looks up, there's really no one there inside. There's got to be someone Jalal, at that far post streaking in. So if he does look up, he could just lay that across the face and let him battle. But what an effort by Mueller to just create something on his own. Big physical and showing a little bit of speed as well. Mitch Hammer takes the corner. Mueller had it at his feet momentarily. Marco Gonzalez. Jesus Partida against Chilau. 
Walker gets it back to Hafferty. Hafferty all the way over on the right side. Daniel Moran against Strenov. Gonzalez trying to one touch it into the area. Fortieth minute now, still no score. Each team one shot on goal. Last time we checked, 89 degrees here in Corvallis. Projected high today of 99. Just a lot of space in the midfield that I don't think either team is taking advantage of. As, they, as, as both teams are looking, I think, to be too direct, just trying to go straight up to the top trying to play over the top. And it's funny because both will tell you they want to play a possession style. Yeah, I think a lot of it, you know, I mean, then there's another look at it, what we're seeing, but I think a lot of it is because of the heat. It's a, it's a little bit little bit difficult so early on in the season to be playing under these types of conditions. You tend to think as a player that it's easier if you're direct and just go over the top, but in actuality, it's much harder. This is Partida against Asani Dotson. Tackle by Strenov. You always find it as a player, it's, but the game's easier when you have the ball. <laughs> so keeping possession's got to be of utmost importance for both sides. But you're right, instinctively it would seem to be easier to boot the ball ahead 30 yards than to build up pass for pass. Yeah, the issue is, is that uh, on most of those, you know, let's say even if it's 50-50, you lose possession and then you're back on defense. But if you can keep possession, play through the midfield, change the point of attack from one side to the other, you feel better mentally because you have the ball and, if, and, it, and it's draining on the opposing team and forces them to just shift on a defensive stance, which is so tiring mentally. You're moving the ball, they're moving their legs. Exactly. Pac-12 halftime report coming up. Kate Rooney in studio. Talk about the weekend women's soccer highlights. Uh, take a look at Pac-12 football getting rolling this weekend. And more coming up in the week ahead. Sonny Dotson coming out. Nathan Broughton coming in. Broughton, like you, Kobe, not Triskaidekaphobic. He wears number 13. I think you should explain to everybody what that was you just said. <laughs> Triskaidekaphobia. Fear of the number 13. Okay. <laughs> Which uh, was your number, if I'm not mistaken. Markey with a header. Second opportunity saved by Adama. Well, Markey had a chance earlier on that I complained he doesn't get it, doesn't get it on target. Well, as this ball is driven to the far post, Markey's going to make the most of this one. Watch this, just out jumps his opponent. It gets saved right here. And then he has a second go at it, and it ends up being Jordan Chavez that gets that knee right in the way to save the goal scoring opportunity. A couple of opportunities at the end of the first half here for Oregon State. What a good ball that was on the outswinger from Mitch Hammer. Yeah, great ball by Hammer being put in there to Markey, just driving that back to that back post. You know, allowing your players to do what they do best. There's another one. 
Bueller chests it up and over. Emmy Mueller, look for more from him in the second half. In a moment, we're going to chat with Rich Ryerson, the head coach of UNLV, who, by the way, is also a student at UNLV. He's getting his master's degree this December in public administration, nonprofit leadership. Masters, nonprofit leadership. So we got a student coach. Yeah, <laughs> and it makes sense. He's raised three and a half million dollars, and they're trying to raise twenty million more to get that new stadium in Las Vegas. The first half comes to an end in a goalless tie. Oregon State had a couple of shots on goal. UNLV had one. Danny Mazowski, their top scorer. You have a look at Kevin Partita. And Oregon State and UNLV in a scoreless game. They last met in the middle of September last year at UNLV. That was a 2-0 win for Oregon State. We welcome in Rich Ryerson, the head coach for UNLV. And your thoughts on the first 45 minutes and the heat and what that meant to your team. Well, I think it's uh, obviously it's hot for both teams. Uh, the humidity is high and, uh, you know, there's a little haze in the sky. But, you know, both teams are playing. I think, uh, you know, I, I really think Oregon State's brought a, a great game today. And, uh, and they're getting a lot of chances in the air inside the box. So we just need to continue to be strong uh, in the back. And uh, hopefully we can get maybe a counterattack. Uh, Coach, what do you need to do to get Danny Mazowski more involved in the game, to get more on the ball, on the ball in that attacking third? Well, I think right now we're, we're transitioning uh, too fast, and I, I don't think that we're actually trying to hold the ball the way we can, I think. So, uh, so I, what I'm going to talk to the guys about is just trying to make better decisions in transition, uh, that first touch out of uh, when we win the ball uh, in that moment, and then we just need to find Danny's feet a little bit more as well. All right, Rich. Hey, good luck getting that degree, that master's degree this December. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a little pro project at halftime. So. <laughs> Out of Thank boy. You. Good luck. <laughs> exactly. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye -bye. Rich Ryerson, head coach of UNLV. Pac-12 halftime report is coming up for the Pac-12 Network studio. Kate Rooney will be along in a moment. No score at the half. Along with Kobe Jones, I'm Rich Burke, back here preparing for the second half. No score, UNLV and Oregon State. Steve Simmons, head coach of Oregon State. And Steve, how do you get more opportunities for your guys up top in the second half? Well, you know, they, they, they kind of switched into a 3-5-2 from their last game. And so what we were telling our guys, uh, the space is, is going to be out wide. And we're trying to create overloads out wide so we can... We can penetrate and get crosses in, and, and if we can get on the break early to have our forwards, one of them at least, peel out in the wide channel so there's isolation and, and see if we can pull that back three. Coach, has there been an emphasis with the heat to uh, keep more possession through the midfield? Yeah, you know, Kobe, we're, we're trying, we're trying to, 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 to press, but, it, you know, the, the reality is it's harder with the heat. So if we can stay on the ball a little more, that's going to save our legs and, and uh, obviously uh, have their legs a little bit more tired. But if we can keep the ball a little more, connect some passes, then I think we can uh, take advantage of it. Okay, Steve, thanks a lot. Good thanks, luck guys. in the second half. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, Kobe. Exactly what you were seeing about uh, keeping possession. Highlights from the first half brought to you by State Farm. Get to a better state. Timo Malish had a go midway through the half. Yeah, well, there was really no step up there. So Malish says, hey, why not? I'm going to have a crack at it from distance. But then on the other side, you see Oregon State with the man, Timmy Mueller, coming through and making something happen on his own. Just dribbling and taking players on. And finally, off of the cross. This is one of the big balls off of the corner kick. And then you see Markey comes up with multiple opportunities. Two big defensive plays in that sequence for Jordan Chavez, a junior from the San Diego area for UNLV. First half stats, one shot on goal for the Rebels, just two for Oregon State. Yeah, but you see just with the totality of shots, you just have to be a little bit cleaner, more precise for Oregon State. And I think they can make something happen here in this second half. As the legs go, things will open up. And both teams 
going pretty deep into the roster in the first half with the heat and humidity here in Corvallis. Timmy Mueller going to start the second half, having a quick conversation with Matthias Bender. Now this Jordan Jones likewise starting the second half. Yeah, and this is something that we saw quite a bit last season, was these two playing together up top, and they seem to have a good understanding of each other. Looking for the same type of partnership that Shelton had with Mueller three years ago. And they have developed that here over the last couple of years. Of course, with Kyrie Shelton here, neither Mueller nor Jones was the key. And so that really opened things up for the two of them. Sonny Dotson, Jaime Morales. Look out, Marquise Pitt. Stranov was unable to maintain possession. Pitt! And Ryan Vincent has it. Well, I think another squandered opportunity for UNLV as Pitt is able to go 1v1 draws the second defender and he actually has his teammate Mazowski overlapping into an open space if he could have laid it off to him he would have had I think a better opportunity at goal so we're seeing twice now for UNLV probably the the opportunity with the least chance of something coming up it being made by the two strikers one time it was Mazowski Going 1v1 and electing not to get it to pit. This time it was the other way around. Great minds think alike, Kobe. You had said the way to beat the Heat is to maintain possession, make the other team run. That's what Steve Simmons said coming into this half. And as that player, Morales is going to be the one for Oregon State that will allow them to keep possession. He's got to demand it. He's got to open up into spaces and get the ball off of the feet of his teammates. When it comes down to it, the nature of the game is you don't want your defenders, your center backs, your defensive midfielder being that playmaker. The playmaker should be the playmaker, the number 10, Morales. He's got to get on the ball more. That's Strenov, the holding midfielder, now to Diaz. Diaz tried to get it to Bender, but Oscar Velazquez was there for UNLV. Pitt with Kevin Partida to his right. Neither team really keeping possession. There's a little bit sloppy on the ball. There's that key guy you're talking about, Morales, finding Dotson. Timmy Mueller. Danny Mazowski. Now Timo Malish. Malish, the German, adapted well to the American style of play, American culture, 3.8 GPA. Jones, now to Morales. Diaz, one touch. Matias Bender. Hassani Dotson. Yes. 
Dotson trying to earn the corner. State stepping up a little bit high, just to starting the defensive line and right outside the 18 of UNLV. We'll see if they can get some type of turnover. Hafferty over the top, looking for Mueller. Morales heads it to Dotson. Dotson didn't play on Friday, dealing with a foot injury. Gone most of the way here today. Strenov, now to Bender. The Dane to the Austrian. To the Spaniard, Morales. Now that's a great combination play up through the middle, and they're, they're finally starting to connect with the passes, but that final pass going through from Morales out wide has got to be better. That weight of the passes we talked about, that's got to be into the space towards the corner flag where he can run onto it and get across it. Bender has Morales in front of him. Beyond that, Mueller. Jordan Jones, one touch to Bender. Dotson, Asani Dotson. And that's a nice strike from Dotson as that ball went out wide to him. He just touches it towards goal no one steps up but the, the the steps step up that does come is way too late he has a decent strike at least testing searching and probing the UNLV side and what we're starting to find is not so much Morales that is the one that's getting on the ball he's 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 getting a little bit better movement for Oregon State but they're focusing on him and the player that's picking up a lot of the balls is right here Bender he's been picking up the balls deep and then he comes in late picking up the balls to be the connector going forward foul on James dry opportunity to come on up here for Oregon State I'm at Morales on the ball right now. Headed by Chavez, punched by Otama. Ball doesn't bounce Oregon State's way, and Malish clears it. Morales lays it off for Bender. Mueller, not heavy enough on that pass. Seeing Oregon State starting to pick up their possession through the midfield. They're holding on to the ball a little bit more. UNLV is dropping back into a defensive shell in the second half. They haven't had an opportunity to get forward too much, so it's up to Oregon State to see if they can find a way to beat those two lines of defense that are dropping in right in front of them. Mueller a little strong on the touch a moment ago. I think he wanted another opportunity, and he got it momentarily. Now Bender. Jaime Morales, diving save by Adama. That's a decent shot by Morales as once again, a, a little bit touch out wide. No one's able to get up and close him down and he has a decent shot testing the keeper. And if you're an Oregon State fan, you gotta like this as they're consistently creating chances and shots from distance. It's gonna force the players to step out a little bit more to create. Matias Bender, got to shank that one, looking for Mueller. Now Jaime Morales, I believe that's now 
12 shots on goal, or shots for Oregon State, three on goal. Bender, little space for himself. Diaz maintains possession. Lok Strenov. Strenov's parents, Mads and Moretta, were here for a game last year. And we did here on Pac-12 Network. Haverty sending it in. Morales wanted the call, thought he was dumped inside the area. Mazowski hasn't touched it must, much. Brother Adam played on Friday, but has not played today. UNLV maybe with an opportunity here. Velazquez. Kevin Partida. Nah, it's just too slow from UNLV. If you take four or five touches on the ball, you're allowing, allowing the opposing team to get back into a defensive shape, which Oregon State has done. And they're looking pretty good now. And it's difficult to beat two lines of four. And then sometimes the striker coming back to help out as well defensively. Oregon State typically does a really nice job with that block of eight. Look out. James Ng off of Sam Tweeten. And a corner for UNLV. Just their second of the match. Marco Gonzalez checking in for the Rebels. Gonzalez, 73 minutes in his first college game on Friday and had an assist. Part of the Real Salt Lake Academy. Timo Malish, excellent with both feet. Going to take the in-swinger here. Punched out by Vincent. Swing and a miss for Shota Takata. Ryan Vincent, Redshirt Jr., who's an Oregonian from Newburgh. Throw in for dry. Headed by Tweeden. Oregon State applied the pressure for the first 10 minutes of this second half. Now UNLV having an opportunity here. Timo Malish. Strenov took it away. Both sides just giving up the ball in midfield. I'd almost like to see, you know, on either team, as the player picks up the ball in the midfield, drive at the opposing team and be willing to try to dribble beyond a player, draw a defender towards you, and then, if necessary, make the pass. James Ng, defended by Diaz. Strenov was there against the ever-dangerous Danny Mazowski. <laughs> Approaching the 60th minute here, Nathan Broughton, number 13, checking in, along with Mitch Hammer. Broughton out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Went to Thunder Ridge High School. 34 games entering this year in his Oregon State career. One goal, a couple of assists. And Lok Strenov getting some water quickly here. On a day like today, as it goes along, hot and humid, I would think you've got to stay hydrated to avoid cramps. Yeah, that's always going to be a concern. And like I mentioned early on in the season, really not game fitness 
yet all, all these guys for the full the full 90 and beyond and then when you have the humidity that it makes it even worse look at Jalen Markey that's a good teammate right there spraying Loke Stranov down Maybe a couple of future beeves there. Joel Walker replaces Loke Strenoff of Oregon State. Up to 92 degrees now with 30% humidity. That's always rough for players. As the game goes on, it's just getting hotter. We're used to it getting cooler, but it's just getting hotter there. Yeah. It's getting t tougher and tougher to play. Been a warm summer in the Willamette Valley. A lot of days with triple digit temperatures, unusually warm. Two strikers right there, Mueller with Jones behind him. Diaz against Malish. Partita. Along with Mitch Hammer. Now you could sit here. Mitch Hammer's teammates screaming, no foul, no foul. But uh, apparently he wasn't listening as he just goes in hard because the foul, because you actually allowed the player to uh, get out of jail free card, as we like to. There's no need to foul there. He's facing, he's facing the sideline, and you have him trapped in that position. So potential opportunity at a corner lost for Oregon State. Joel Walker. Walker, a true freshman out of Colorado Springs. Hammer, likewise, a true freshman, finding Diaz. Marco Gonzalez on the ball for UNLV. Calmly gets it over to dry. Still not great opportunities for either Timmy Mueller or Jordan Jones. I think, I think that's been a little bit slow in getting the ball up to them and and, and finding their feet in, in offensive positions. Now, yes, they've dropped into the midfield and they picked up the ball, but they're strikers. You want your strikers to be picking up the ball in the final third, and I don't think we've seen that yet with the both of them on the pitch at the same time. Similarly for UNLV, Danny Mazowski hasn't had many opportunities. Mitch Hammer. Throwing coming up for Shota Takata. Don Chilau coming in for Oregon State. Jordan Jones comes out. Memo Diaz in. And James Ng, uh, Jason Ng comes out. Daniel Moran, number 15, right there with the throw in, replacing Shota Takata. Moran had the game-winning goal with a second to go in the second overtime three days ago. Along with his heat. Both these teams just played 72 hours ago. Less than that. Night game on Friday, day game on Monday. Yeah. 
so early in the season, it's warm, and it's the second game for each team in a four-day stretch. Yeah, and I think it's them establish, establishing a rhythm, too, just really getting to know each other and how they're going to be playing. I, I feel like we're seeing a lot of passes that are just off the mark by a fraction, you know, not really understanding where the other player is going to be, where to pass the ball. Shot there for Nathan Broughton. And that's a look too, right there, the, the sharpness. Not quite as sharp as you expect these players to be in a couple of games or so. Oregon State's next four games will be away from home, two in Spokane against American University and UC Riverside, then two in New York at Colgate and at Syracuse. Next home game coming up September 17th against the University of Portland. And the next time Oregon State on Pac-12 Network, the conference opener October 1st at UW. The first of eight Oregon State conference matches televised by Pac-12 Network. Here's Joel Walker. Walker with an opportunity after the missed slide tackle by Dry. Walker. Good header there by Jordan Chavez, who has made a trio of good defensive plays in this match. Yeah, and that's much better by Oregon State. Getting the ball to the feet of Walker, and that's what I was saying. Get it and drive at the defender. Force the defender to make a decision. The defender bites. He gets beaten here, and now all of a sudden it opens up everything. You can get your head up. You pull another defender out defensively, and you have, you know, at least a better chance of scoring a goal. I would have liked to have seen off of that cross, too, just seeing... Timmy Mueller try to beat that defender to that near post space. Jalen Markey with a header. Sam Tweeden likewise. Joel Walker swings and misses. Memo Diaz on the turf. And Joel Walker shown a yellow card. First booking of the match for Oregon State. Jordan Chavez got one earlier for UNLV. Marco Gonzalez. Had an assist at UP on Friday. He's on the ball here. Better by Dotson. Hammer ahead to Walker. Walker's got some speed. Here's Mazowski. Look out. He's got some space. Danny Mazowski. Dumped just outside the area. Well, this is one of the this is what Mazowski wants to do. He picks up the ball. He goes, he's very direct. And he gets tripped up as he tries to squeeze between two players. He actually gets uh, you know entangled with tweeting that. Not sure he would have been able to pick up that ball even if he had gotten through because that was a heavy touch beyond the line of defense and I thought that Vincent was going to pick that one up. Yep, I agree with you. Oregon State had a similar opportunity from just about this exact same area in the first half. Well, these are about the best opportunities for, for the Rebels because they have not created much through the run of play. So a set piece is probably the best for them to get on the scoreboard. One of the top scorers in the nation, but it's not him. No, it is him, Mazowski. It's off Chilau. Calling for Memo Diaz inside the six. 
Cleared out by Eric Diaz. Better by Tweeden. Hafferty clears it. With 20 minutes to go in the first half, we had a water break, so one might be coming up at the 70 minute mark here. A little slow on the reaction from Oregon State, you know, on the first cross, on the on the deflection. You know, and these are the moments as as the game goes on. It's extremely hot. You know, it's difficult physically, and it's starting to get difficult mentally to stay sharp. This is where those veterans have to step up and, and take that leadership role, and keeping everybody in tune with the match not giving up silly chances. Walker flying over Jesus Partida. That's a little acrobatic. Yeah, he's got a good roll going on here to avoid injury. Yeah. That's a talent in and of itself. It's called self-preservation. Yeah. <laughs> Mentioned those veterans, Oregon State's a veteran team starting eight upperclassmen. Chalau, a junior on the run. And I believe it was past the far side touch. Chalau against Chavez. Flag was up. So what was the call? Now it looks like there was a foul on the sideline and the referee was seeing if there was an advantage and realized it really wasn't a distinct advantage for Chalau over there in the corner. So it gives the call to Oregon State. I'm not exactly sure why Markey's out here taking this, considering that he's been the, their best header of the ball off of set pieces. He should be in there in the box. Header by Hammer. Yonov, he tried to counter. Mazowski was lurking. This is Partita. Expect that water break after this build up here for UNLV. Memo Diaz. Another opportunity coming up here for UNLV after the foul on Timmy Mueller. That's a little touch right here. Just has Mueller doing a little bit of a flyby by Diaz. This is a dangerous opportunity for UNLV. This is one that, that the keepers don't like too much. This gives the opportunity for the player to try to sneak that in near post. And the keeper has to be aware of, but then there's gonna be a lot of bodies coming right across the face of the goal. So Vincent has to be on his toes here. A lot of things to be aware of. Marco Gonzalez on the ball for UNLV. The freshman has a goal. It's off the crossbar. Best opportunity for UNLV. Without a doubt, off the crossbar, testing Ryan Vincent in goal. And now coming down on the counter. Don Chilau. Comes UNLV again, Partida. Memo Diaz. Now we'll take a look here. We see this ball that gets put in off of the cross by, crossbar by Gonzalez. Forcing the save from Ryan Vincent. 
No, extremely fortunate there. I'm not exactly sure how Vincent lets that one go to the back post. Yeah, Gonzalez very nearly threaded that one in. So in the 72nd minute, a water break here on this hot day in Corvallis. The beginning of the second half, Oregon State had some chances. Since then, it has been UNLV that has had the chances. Oregon State, next four games away from home. They've got two in Spokane against American University and then UC Riverside, then two in New York, Colgate and eighth-ranked Syracuse, and then home against the always tough University of Portland on September 17th. And again, the next time Oregon State will be on Pac-12 Network will be in their conference opener at the University of Washington, 3 o'clock on October the 1st. First of eight conference matches for Oregon State televised here on Pac-12 Network. Rich Burke along with Kobe Jones and a much needed water break for each team and the heat and humidity here in Corvallis. And uh, UNLV getting the better of the opportunities here the last few minutes. Yeah, I think the game is, uh, is switched. It's been a little bit of a pendulum going one side or the other in the second half. You know, Oregon State, you know, looked like the better team started controlling the game, but then all of a sudden now UNLV has really started taking it to Oregon State. And as you can see, 92 degrees with the 30% humidity. That's not easy to play in. And it's, get, it's getting hotter. You know, we saw earlier on in the match in the first half, it was 80, 88? Now it's just it's creeping up. Players don't like that. Mm. Yeah, they're used to starting games and having it get cooler as it goes along. Along about 5 o'clock, reach a projected high perhaps of 99 degrees. UNLV doing a little better job of late of connecting passes. Getting the ball in the attacking third. We're at Paul Lorenz Field, opened up in 1996. Oregon State, an NCAA tournament team three years ago, got their first ever tournament win. one nothing over the University of Denver. Mitch Hammer slow to get up. Mitch Hammer, he takes the foul. Let's see if they do a better job. Yes, I like this one already for Oregon State. This time, looks like Hammer's going to take the, the set piece, and they're actually going to put Markey inside, as you saw him jogging across the screen. As he's been dangerous on all these set pieces. He's running into the middle of the 18. Sam Tweeten in there as well. Header by Memo Diaz. And that foul goes against Oregon State. I don't know about you, I felt like that was a little bit of a quicker water break than the one in the first half. Well, we had a brief break when Loke Strenov was on the turf. Here's Diaz. Yeah, I agree it was quicker. Kevin Partita. Marco Gonzalez. Mazowski trying to spring Gonzalez on a give and go. Well, not the best ball here, but you see Gonzalez. He seems to have a good understanding of Mazowski as he's going forward, trying to do a one-two combination just inside the box, but it just goes wide. I think that's going to be the combination that could be threatening to Oregon State's back line. Jaime Morales replacing Joel Walker. Walker had come in when Loke Strenov came out. Spencer Jackson into the game for UNLV. He's on the ball right now. Kevin Partita. Header by Tweed and Diaz. Giving some space. Diaz. Wide left. 
And Mo Diaz out of Anthony, New Mexico, second year with UNLV after a couple of years at Yavapai Junior College in Arizona. Oregon State has to be aware they're just structurally the change for UNLV as they've actually had Partita drop in a little bit more and they're allowing those in that 4-3-3 formation, those three to go up and to attack the two outside players to join into the attack. And that's why we're seeing more possession and more, I, I, I would say, opportunity for UNLV up high. They've got the numbers going forward. Broughton out of Mueller. Morales. At the same time, though, that could create the opportunity for a counter. It, it can if you get possession of the ball. You know, and as long as UNLV, through their possessions, creates a shot, has something knocked out for a corner or a goal kick, they're happy with that because the, it, it, it will allow them to have time to reset defensively and then prep, try to win the ball, and attack quickly going forward. Try sending it opposite side of the 18. Daniel Moran over there. He had the game winner three days ago at Portland. UNLV gets the opportunity on the corner here. Dry has been pretty strong on these throw ins. Jalen Markey got his foot on it. It's a good ball in by Dry. Asani Dotson down for Oregon State. Missed the game on Friday, dealing with a foot injury. Broughton. Morales fought it away from Spencer Jackson. Opportunity maybe here for Oregon State. Left footed shot. A couple of opportunities in this half for Nathan Broughton. Has one career goal. Matthias Bender replacing Mitch Hammer. Bender the Austrian, a transfer this year from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Went to high school in Arizona. Mission Heights prep. And it'll be interesting to see with Bender back in if all of a sudden the possession starts to switch back in Oregon State's favor because I felt when he was in there, he really took control of the game for Oregon State. Foul called on Jaime Morales. 79th minute now, still no score. Best opportunity in this game came 10 minutes ago when Marco Gonzalez on a set piece angled one up and over Ryan Vincent, but it dented the crossbar. Daniel Moran against Joe Hafferty. And Hafferty earns the goal kick.
Timo Malish coming in and Spencer Jackson coming out. Malish, 23 games last year, was a true freshman. He was the Western Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year. Six goals and three assists. And Jackson, who scored in the 67th minute on Friday at UP, comes out. Timmy Mueller, Hafferty, Dotson and Morales. It's Morales who comes away with it. Matias Bender, Eric Diaz now. Memo Diaz, no relation, takes it away. Here's Memo. Mazowski lurking near the top of the area. You know, a lot of promise and a buildup that just slowly, all that promise seeps out as UNLV, UNLV players start looking backwards instead of going forwards and taking a player on. Here's Mazowski against Markey. Both fall to the turf. Non-call, and now foul called against Mazowski. Well, you know Mazowski will go forward, but Markey does an excellent job of stifling everything. Comes in, body to body there, just the tangled of the feet here, and then and you see Mazowski just grabs onto him, and that's where the foul gets called. Boy, I like those two guys, Mazowski for UNLV, Markey for Oregon State, both fierce competitors, but showing good sportsmanship, helping each other out. by Timo Malish until that touch that was too strong. Jordan Jones coming back in for Oregon State. Don Chilau leaves. So both Jones and Mueller in for the final seven and a half minutes of regulation. If we're still tied, we'll have two 10-minute overtime periods, golden goal in effect. Bender on the ball, see if he's going to be looking for Markey at that back post. Markey had a header opportunity in the first half on a corner. Bender's out swinger. Markey indeed was coming to the top of the six, but it was right to Enrique Adama. And this is a dangerous time for Oregon State if you go off of, off of their last game in the final 10 minutes. They led Fairfield 1-0, and Fairfield two goals in the final 10 minutes. Their only two shots on goal the entire day. They'd been sitting in a bunker the entire day. Well, any coach will tell you that's a lack of concentration in those final, final minutes. That's the most important time of the game. Defensively, can you see a game out? Can you make sure if you're, if you're goalless, if you haven't taken any goals, if you can keep that shutout? And this is more interesting for Oregon State as they're, as they're starting to push for the goal. Can they get numbers forward to help out, but still in tra their transition game be on point to help out defensively? Hafferty unable to create anything there. Dotson maintains possession for Oregon State against Marco Gonzalez.
Jimmy Mueller dropped to the turf. No call from Jeff Arthur Holtz. Jones against James Dry. And Jones with a push of Dry. And now Kevin Partita come on over and some more going on here. Look out. Arthur Holt's trying to restore order. Enrique Anima coming over and pushing away Jordan Jones. Jalen Markey having to be held back. Going to take a moment to get this sorted out. Yeah, there's no need for all of it, and it really does start with Jones, you know, giving the push, you know, after the fact. And here comes the contact here. But then you'll see that Jones just gives that little shove right there. And that, two shoves. Yeah, that, that's where the problem is, where he can find himself picking up a card. James Dry shown a yellow card. Bender to the middle to Dotson. Asani Dotson, defended by Kevin Partita. Well, this time instead of Bender going out, you got Morales going out to take this corner. I always think it's interesting if you have players out at the back post, you need someone to really kind of step in front of the keeper. Here's Morales, good back post for Jordan Jones. Shouts come from the UNLV bench, find your mark. Here's Timo Malish, he's got Gonzalez in front of him. Lazowski on the near side, but it was taken away. Morales falls to the turf. And foul called on Daniel Moran. Here's Morales. This, this, this ball gets away from him. In fact, it was Memo Diaz with the foul. And you see Diaz just comes in, and he, he's looking to go body to body, and that's what the referee calls. Under four minutes left in regulation here. It's Jaime Morales who takes it. Not much on that one. That's got to be a better ball for Morales. That's got to be lifted in the air to have to give your teammate an opportunity to at least get his head on it and put that back across the face of goal. I'm Morales, the Spaniard. Transfer from the University of Vermont. Left Vermont on good terms. Was looking for an opportunity in a bigger conference. And the head coach there, Jesse Cormier, was a former assistant at Oregon State when Simmons, Steve Simmons, was an assistant here. And Cormier didn't want Morales on the same coast, so he called Steve Simmons. And now Jaime Morales, a member of the Beavs. There's Steve Simmons. Timo Malish against Sam Tweeden. 
Nice defending by Tweet. Could have been a big chance there for UNLV. Partita dumped by Jordan Jones. James Dry. Header by Markey. Two minutes left in regulation. No stoppage time in college soccer. Shota Takata with a head on it. UNLV scored a goal with the second to go in the second overtime in Portland on Friday that won it. Oregon State gave up a couple of late goals in the final 10 minutes to lose to Fairfield on Friday. We have a minute 15 to go in regulation. Again, up to 20 minutes of OT, two 10-minute periods coming up with sudden victory in effect. A goal would win it if we get to OT. One minute left. <laughs> Mitch Hammer replaces Nathan Broaden. Eric Diaz, the final chance for Oregon State. Matias Bender, giving some space. Bender. Mueller's there. They wanted the handball and didn't get it. And Jaime Morales all over Jeff Arthur Holtz. Well, we'll take a look here as this ball comes through. You see everyone's going up to challenge. Goes off the chest of Jordan Jones. And it looks like it does hit the hand there. Jordan Chavez. Does it? I mean, that, that definitely hits the hand. And you could say, I mean, without, if that ball doesn't hit the hand, it actually gives Jordan Jones the opportunity to control that with his chest or try to do something with it with his feet. But the hand stops. It's continued rise. So and that's a tough one. That's going to be a tough one for Oregon State to look back on and see that it, that it wasn't called. So no call on the potential handball right at the end of regulation. And so we'll be heading into overtime here in Corvallis. A goalless tie between the big... Well, no score through regulation. Heading into overtime in just a moment. Highlights brought to you by State Farm. Get to a better state. And in the first half, it was Timo Malish who had an early go. And yeah, Malisha steps up and has a beautiful knuckling ball, but Vincent comes up with the huge save. And then Timmy Mueller went on the one run, defended by Jordan Chavez. And for a striker going out wide, he's starting to try to push forward and create something. Ends up getting a corner kick. Jalen Markey with a header opportunity here. Probably the best opportunity up to that point in the game from Markey. OSU thought they had it. And in the second half, Asani Dotson got his left foot on one. And then Jaime Morales. Both. Diving save by Anima. Yeah, both almost from the same spot, but then you see this set piece. A tester off of the crossbar. Vincent gets caught in no man's land. That was the best opportunity of the match so far from Marco Gonzalez of UNLV. 12 shots for Oregon State, 9 for UNLV. 3-2 in shots on goal. 
Oregon State six corners and UNLV three. On this hot day here in Corvallis, temperature creeping up toward the mid-90s. And just about ready for the start of overtime. Rich Burke along with Hall of Famer Kobe Jones. Oh. Two 10-minute overtime periods. And the golden goal in effect. Any goal and the game is over. Well, I don't know how you want to call it now, but when it's this hot out, this humid, you're having a battle of a game like this. This this just comes down to you know to grit, guts, desire, whatever you want to call it, to see who can come through here. It's tough. It's tough mentally, but more so physically. So early on in the season, to have a, an overtime game in this type of heat. And when both teams played less than three days ago. Jones and Mueller both on the pitch to begin the overtime for Oregon State. They're the two closest to you. Biggest scoring threats for OSU. They have 23 goals apiece in their Oregon State careers, both seniors now. No real opportunities outside that one time Timmy Mueller went on the run in this match for either of them. Oregon State had the pressure applied at the beginning of the second half. UNLV turned the tables for about 15 minutes. And then again later on. Mueller. Punched away by Anima. Chance for Jones. And it's in. Jordan Jones with the game winner in the 91st minute. What a celebration for Oregon State. You can see the joy from those players there, and you can see the utter desperation and just the defeat from UNLV. And, and they always talk about the most dangerous times is right when the, when the half starts, when an overtime starts, and this is within the first minute. It's a good ball that gets put up into the box by Timmy Mueller, and it just, it's its touched by the goalkeeper, but not cleared, and it ends up finding the feet of Jordan Jones, and he strikes it, and it can't be saved off of the line. This is a great opportunity, and like I said, it's just grit being opportunistic, and this is exactly what comes of this whole play by Jordan Jones. Jordan Jones with a game winner. The assist to Timmy Mueller, you can expect those two to be connecting all season long. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. It's once again, we've seen, we've seen those two through the years come up together and have an understanding of one, one, one another. And that's all you needed to do. Get the ball in the box.